today. Let us share the Word of God under the sermon title, Respect One Another. On the day we go back to our heavenly home, won't we suddenly be transformed into a spiritual body? If so, our body shouldn't be the only thing that transforms. What else should change? All of our characteristics must also change. This is why God teaches us in 2 Peter chapter 1 that we must participate in the divine nature. Let's take a look through the Bible and confirm the teachings of Mother, who wants us to respect others, and be reminded that we ought to be transformed into this kind of character. It is not easy to have this kind of nature. But to do so, shouldn't we go through difficulty rather than trying to avoid it? Let's see this teaching in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Through our knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. What kind of nature does God want us to participate in? When we take off the flesh, our bodies will be changed, and we will not have any physical bodies anymore. After we are in our spiritual bodies, our minds must no longer be filled with physical things. Our bodies aren't the only thing that should change. That is why it is written, so that you may participate in the divine nature. Verse 5, For this very reason, make every effort to what should you add to your faith? Goodness. Faith is the first and most important. God said we should add goodness on top of the foundation of faith. And then to goodness, add what? Knowledge. And to knowledge, what should we add? Self-control. God told us to have self-control. If we do not have self-control and do things that are ungracious, our nature will be incomplete and we will not be able to go to the kingdom of heaven. To return to our home, the eternal heavenly kingdom established by God, we must have the divine nature in the same way angels have their angelic nature. Let's continue with verse 6. And add what to knowledge? Self-control. And to self-control, what should we add? Perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. We need to acquire all these things in our life of faith. Verse 7. And to godliness, what should we add? Brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, what is he? He is nearsighted and blind. If anyone teaches that all we need to do to be saved is to keep the Sabbath day and Passover, but doesn't teach that we need to have this kind of divine nature, that person is blind. He is nearsighted and blind. Being nearsighted means that he cannot see forward into the future and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. People who teach or think that we don't need to have these qualities will end up committing the foolish act of forgetting the sins they committed in the past and live as if they were righteous. Verse 10 Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, God said we must always do these things. And if you do, you will never fall, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The first thing we need to do after coming into the truth 
is grow our faith. If you say you have faith, you should prepare all these qualities above, in addition to that faith. Regarding the 40-year-long journey in the desert, those people were not Egyptians or some other people, but Israelites who believed in God. Then, why were they destroyed in the desert? We need to think about this carefully. Those who put into practice the teachings concerning the divine nature will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of God. Some might think, God's truth is so good that we don't need these qualities to go to heaven, do we? We do need these qualities. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, what will happen? You will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you think Jesus just said this without meaning it? He said, you cannot enter, because you really cannot. All the teachings and words of Christ are true. If we do not develop those qualities, we cannot enter heaven. God is leading us to be born again so that we can receive a rich welcome into His kingdom. We should always remember this. You don't have to ask, why do we have to live that way? while the world doesn't. Since we are not people who pursue worldly things, but people who pursue heavenly things, isn't God teaching us how we can receive a rich welcome into the kingdom of God? Therefore, showing respect for others is something we must do in order to participate in the divine nature. When we do so, only then can the whole process of changing into the character of God be completed. How can I add self-control? How can I gain perseverance? How can I practice brotherly kindness? When God asks us to love, we should think, how can I fully achieve the kind of love God has asked me to have? You can ponder about this or that, but an easier way to think is, all these qualities can be achieved when we respect one another. Whether it is today or in the past, People do not know how to respect or be united with each other. So we see violent crimes and bullying occur in the schools. We even see violence in the workplace. These things occur because people have a lack of respect for one another. People do not become one because they do not work together. Rather, they do things only for their own benefit. Although they do this, Shouldn't we engrave the words of God on our hearts every day and walk the path given to us? Heavenly Mother, emphasize this point once again. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. While listening to Mother, inscribe her words on our hearts through her teaching once again. 2 Peter chapter 1 came into my mind, and I was reminded of the teaching about the divine nature. I thought, we really have to become like this. I thought, since we don't do this and are unable to enter the kingdom of God without being changed, God willingly teaches us once, twice, three times, and even ten times, repeating the same teaching to us. Let us go to Ephesians, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 21. Surely you heard of him, and were taught in him, in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life, to do what? Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. If we previously pursued the world, being filled with jealous thoughts like, even if I have to step on people's back, how can I be happy? Now, we must put off our old self to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. 
From verse 25, God teaches us the way to put on the new self. Let us look carefully so that we can participate in the divine nature and receive a rich welcome into the kingdom of God. Verse 25, Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. To do it no longer means that we must repent and work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Do not let anything hurtful or disrespectful come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may do what? Benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. What should we do about them? Get rid of them. We must get rid of all of them. Abandon all of the evil characteristics that we had in the past. Verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. We can understand here why the eternal angelic world, where we are going, is a wonderful place. These are the kind of qualities that all angels and heavenly beings have in the angelic world. Since they all have these qualities, isn't this why God told us to keep training ourselves to be godly, so we may acquire this divine nature before we enter heaven? Let's go to chapter 5, verse 1. Be imitators of. Who do we need to be imitators of as dearly loved children? Since we need to learn this divine nature, it is written, be imitators of God. Verse 2. And live, what kind of life? A life of love, just as Christ loved us. Live a life of love. If we still have hatred or jealousy towards someone, this means that although we have knowledge of the truth of the New Covenant, we have not fully digested the meaning of the New Covenant yet. It is just like holding food in your mouth without swallowing it. God told us to put it into practice. And live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Verse 3, But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather, what should there be? Thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. We must get rid of all these futile thoughts and have faith and add perseverance, self-control, love, and brotherly kindness to it, just as God taught us in 2 Peter chapter 1. We should change gradually in every aspect of our faith. Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Verse 9. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. 
have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, meaning the deeds of darkness. We should become those who know how to dwell in God, little by little. We should respect one another and be the heavenly family members who consider others better than ourselves. Let us see Romans chapter 12, verse 8. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And what should we do? Honor one another above yourselves. God said we must honor one another. Respect and honor mean the same thing. How should we honor one another? Honor one another above ourselves. We should not think, since that person isn't as talented as I am, he needs to learn from me. We are family who are going to heaven. Let's continue with verse 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at what with everyone? Live at peace. God told us to live at peace and in harmony with each other. Verse 19, Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Aren't these words given in Deuteronomy chapter 32? On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We, the family members of faith who are in Zion, should walk this kind of path. We shouldn't just know this, and fail to put it into practice. But think, all the teachings of the Bible are God's commandments. Then, what should we do? We should honor one another above ourselves. Everybody, let's use an example. Let's say there are three children in a family. The youngest sibling isn't as smart or social as the other two. What if the oldest sibling, who is extremely talented, says to the youngest sibling, Why are you such a fool? Will she actually say that? Instead, what will the older sibling do? Even when other people talk bad about her, won't the oldest sibling stand up for the youngest sibling and comfort and encourage her to do better? This is how we should act toward one another. We should respect one another. Everyone, do you know Hans Christian Andersen? He is the author of The Ugly Duckling. He also wrote The Little Match Girl. It is said that Andersen was always bullied by other kids when he was young. It was because he was somewhat ugly, and they say that his family was very poor. Despite being in such an unfavorable circumstance, didn't he write stories instead of being discouraged? He was better than anyone else when it came to writing stories. All people around the world know the name Hans Christian Andersen, but no one knows the names of the kids who made fun of him. Everyone, don't you agree? When Andersen was asked later in life, how could you be so successful? He replied that he could write The Ugly Duckling because he himself experienced what it was like to be ugly. 
and he could write The Little Match Girl because he experienced poverty. He said his unfavorable circumstances made him great. Instead of saying, my circumstances are not good, so I cannot change to have that kind of nature. We must say, since this is what God, our father and mother tell me to do, I will obey their teaching. As long as we have this determination, we will become great figures whose names will shine forever, even if our current situation is unfavorable. Like that of Anderson. It doesn't mean that we will do a good job simply because our surroundings are good. Everyone, there are birds in New Zealand called kiwis. They have wings. Although they have wings, they cannot fly. Kiwis don't have natural enemies in New Zealand. It's not because kiwis are birds of prey like eagles. But the reason they can't fly is because they don't have any natural enemies. Since their food is found all around them, they just need to turn their heads. So they choose to walk to find food instead of flying. As a result, they have lost their original role as a bird. And although their wings are attached, they cannot be used for flying. How sad is this? You might assume good conditions will elevate me higher and higher to a better position. I don't know if you think like this, but this is not true. Everyone, what do you think? Anderson was not born handsome, and he was born into poverty. However, he was a talented writer. Didn't he become a world-famous author? He has been famous for centuries. When people hear the name Anderson, they say, isn't he the author of The Ugly Duckling? He is the famous author who wrote The Little Match Girl. Everyone knows his name. But no one knows whether the kids who made fun of him were named John or Paul or something else. Isn't it true? To let us participate in the divine nature, God sometimes puts us in various difficult situations. When we look around, there is no one who says only good things to us in this sinful world. Sometimes, people can make us extremely angry. However, God said that we must honor one another above ourselves, be faithful to one another, cherish brothers, and encourage each other to hold on to the faith until we enter the everlasting kingdom of heaven. Everyone, you have heard about geese, haven't you? When one of them is too tired to catch up with the rest, two other geese will stay behind and help it recover its strength. And if a goose has been shot, they will stay by its side until it breathes its last breath. There is brotherly love and unity even in the animal kingdom. Then how much more should there be this kind of love in Zion? By doing so, I hope all Zion family members will receive a rich welcome into the everlasting kingdom of heaven where father and mother want us to go. There are more unfavorable situations around us than favorable ones. Let us be thankful for these situations, although they are lacking a little. Anderson said that if his circumstances had been favorable, he never would have been able to write a story like The Little Match Girl or even conceive of a story like The Ugly Duckling. I believe that it is not the bad circumstances that make us act wrongly. What is important is whether we can be motivated to achieve something through the bad circumstances. We need to be devoted to one another in brotherly love and honor one another above ourselves 
in order to receive a grand welcome into the kingdom of God. Try to put these teachings into practice first. They contain many useful things to help us put on the divine nature. Respect one another and cherish each other. We should not be the one who says things like, Anderson, you are useless and ugly. Rather, we should become those who can say, Anderson, you have a great talent to give many lessons through your writings. You should make use of it. That way, you can be a man who is respected by many people. This is the kind of Zion father and mother want. Therefore, we must be devoted to one another in brotherly love and honor one another above ourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep our spiritual fervor, serving God in Zion. Asking you to run diligently until the last moment when you arrive to heaven. I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.